Hey beauties, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the one and only Clean Beauty Podcast. Did you know that in America, cosmetics are not regulated? Companies are free to add thousands of potentially harmful ingredients that personally cause me to have health problems. Hi, I'm the creator of Lashbinder and your host, Cassandra McClure. I've worked in the beauty industry worldwide for over 10 years as a wedding and celebrity makeup artist. Now, I'm on a mission to ban 1,500 ingredients by advocating for cleaner and greener cosmetics. Join me every Monday right here for a new episode on the clean beauty revolution. Um, when you work with clean beauty and you are an advocate or an educator, or you just really want to spread awareness, there's going to be a why behind why you're doing it. There's a why I have, and there's a why that you're going to have. And you want to narrow in on what that is, because that's the first question I'm going to ask you. A girlfriend just contacted me today that said, you know, I'm a model, I'm wearing a lot of makeup. I'm starting to react. I don't like the way I feel. I really want to share this knowledge. I've been listening to the podcast and I really want to join Beauty Counter. And so it's naturally, everyone's going to have their why. And as you can tell, this is real life. Abigail decides that whenever she wants that she's going to be a little brat. My why is because, you know, I was getting unexcited about makeup. The bottom line for me was I was wearing it every single day since I was 12. I was applying it on others every single week. A lots of at, at lots of high numbers, like five to ten people at a time at weddings and events. And I worked with another with a team. <gasps> You're going to your cage. Sorry, guys, but guess what? Sometimes this happens. Um, if you have kids, I mean, let's be real. It just, it's crazy. Now she thinks she's going to bark and I'm going to care. Um, okay. So back to, uh, yeah. And I started feeling sick. You guys, I was feeling really sick and I wore so much makeup and I bought so much and I invested in it that I thought I was an expert. I thought I was, you know, I've been in makeup 10 years. I'm a professional. I went to beauty school. I went to London. I went to LA. I graduated uh, and I worked with celebrities and I worked on music videos and I thought I knew makeup. I thought I knew formulations. I thought I knew all the important stuff like bone structure and, um, how to sh shade and which brushes to use and how to play with formulas and how to mix things and layer things and blend. And I was just so blown away that, the ingredients that I thought were clean and natural because they said they were, um, or because they didn't warn me that they weren't, were fine and were regulated. I had no idea that the MAC eyeshadow I was using had potentially harmful ingredients in it. Like nobody warned me or told me, or I ne it never even crossed my mind because we live in the greatest country in the world. And I thought that the US just, I thought, everything that we did here was for the most part safe unless it was something illegal but um if something was harmful i was thinking it would be more along the lines of a cigarette so i thought you know there would be like a label on it or something like that that said this may cause cancer because a lot of these perfumes and and makeup and things are causing cancer causing blindness causing um all sorts of things and so i just thought that that would be like a standard but apparently it wasn't and so it angered me i i was was not even really worried about how much money I had spent. I was worried about, oh my God, like my vision is permanently damaged. And my, I, I had no idea that the, the, that the problems, the itchiness and dryness on my skin was from this body wash. Like I was just really mad. And so I spoke up. And of course, when you're passionate about something and you're coming from a place of being a professional, like being in the industry, um, and, and saying, Hey, this is not okay. Like what is going on? You know, I think it attracted a lot of people. And so I kept building on that. I kept saying, you know, I'm never going back to this makeup. I'm going to stay clean. I don't care what it takes. I'll even start with my own products if I have to, because I, 
we need cleaner products to apply because we need makeup, we need skincare, we need to wash our bodies and our hair with clean things. Like why, you know, why is this also killing the fish and harming our waterways? Like I just thought all of it was wrong. And it was little things like microbeads, little things that started to add up. And when I looked at the whole picture, I was like, okay, this is my why. This is why I want to work with Beauty Counter. So that's the kind of long, shorter version of the really long story. But really, Beauty Counter is one of the first that I found that was certified B Corp. Okay. So what that means is they're looking at the people, the planet, and they're looking at how much they're charging for things. Are they charging a fair value, fair, fair wage for everything? And are they paying their workers? Right. So the, and they're also local. So sustainability really means like, are they harming, are they dumping sludge into the ocean? Like, no, this company is not doing that. They're based in Santa Monica. They have a beautiful facility. It's woman owned and run. Like I related a lot and I really loved everything that Beauty Counter stood for. And so for me, I my why evolved, but I wanted to stay with the company and grow it and grow with it because I believe in the mission of getting safer products in into the hands of everyone. I think that's the best tagline around. And so that's why I love it so much. So really the first question I get asked is how do I sign up? Because a lot of people don't really stop to talk about their why. They just think, oh, I want to do this too. Um, and I know it's very exciting and, you know, there's beautiful products and everything was so luxurious and it's the nicest beauty line out there. Like if you walk into some other stores, like, you know, Whole Foods, it's like packaging made out of wood or, or paper. Like we have beautiful metal, like gold packaging and, and it's like not harmful to, to anything. It's like, recyclable and reusable and uh, compostable and like all these things that are great. When you're asking about signing up, it's very easy. You can do that online, but I still want to talk to you about what that why is for you. So think about it, you know, write about it. Um, but I, I think that that's the first touch point. And because you're not going to be driven on the days you don't want to do things without that why. You're not going to want to wear makeup or go to the store and talk to the lady at the ca- checkout counter if you aren't passionate, if you aren't an advocate for cleaner products. Um, you're not going to open your mouth when you see your friend using something on their child that could give them cancer you have to know, okay, this is what I'm doing it for and be super serious about it too, because it's not a joke and it's way more than selling a lipstick or a foundation or a shampoo. It's a really big deal. It's a movement. I've dedicated my a, a big chunk of my life to this mission. And so being on my team is, is freaking fun. You can ask anybody and we have the best time, but we all know our whys. We know what we're doing is like for a reason. And it's the best sort of environment because you're all working together for one common goal, even though your motives are different. That's a little bit kind of more into what I said on Facebook, because I didn't want it to be the exact thing. Same. What I said on Facebook is on Facebook. So if you want to go watch that, you can. But I I wanted to get on these touch points as well. So getting in touch with me, my website here. You guys already know where I'm at. I'm here and you can find me on my CassandraMcClure.com and um, on the podcast. So you guys can reach out on the links, on the show notes, through Instagram or email, whatever you want to do. If you know me, then you know I don't like emails. So you'll call me. You'll find a way through my DMs or something. And then my biggest regrets is I don't even really want to say they're regrets. They're just things that I wish I would have done a little different. So joining sooner, honestly, I waited uh, like uh, like <laughs> 10 years, right? I didn't know about it. And if I would have known, I would have joined sooner if I could, but I just didn't know about it. And so I'm saving <laughs> everyone else the heartache um, and the person who introduced it to me was say it was saving me more heartache and it keeps going. And that's like the beauty of this because you get to share something so impactful, so amazing, something that's actually changing. Like this will change the world, right? Like the world is never going to go back 
this is the way forward and clean beauty is a movement, the laws will eventually change. And once they do, like we won't have to worry about it, but it, but joining forces is going to help do it a lot quicker. Because right now the government is just sitting there and there hasn't been a law passed since 1938. And they're all just like fine with all these toxic chemicals all over us all the time in our blood, in babies before they're born. Like, how is that okay? I get a lot of weird questions. To me, this is a weird question. It's not a dumb question. It's just weird. Um, do you need do you need to have parties? Like, um, I don't know what company has parties. I mean, we have like parties when we fly out to Miami, but not like um, socials or parties or anything like that. Like we, I have educational workshops. I was just in Palm Springs and I did a clean beauty workshop where we had fun, but I technically wasn't a party. Um, But no, you don't have to do anything like that. You could if you want, I guess. I mean, you can invite people over and have wine and showcase the products or talk about it. Um, but really it's all about the education. Like if someone doesn't like, no one cares about lipstick, like no one cares. Like it just, sorry, but people do care about, oh my God, I have lead, there's lead in this lipstick. Like I'm going to throw it away. Thank you for saving me, (laughs) saving potentially my life. That's a different conversation. So like, if you're going to talk about education, like, yes, of course. Um, I think me, it, it, this story is best told person to person and that's their whole thing. So once you're like, oh my God, this is what happened to me. And you share your story, your why, and you say, Hey, like I see you're using this hand cream or, or, or lotion, ha- hand sanitizer. Like, Hey, like check out this app. This is super harmful. Here's an alternative. Boom. So it's a very natural thing because you see people using products, spraying hairspray, like doing all kinds of stuff, putting on lipstick all the time, right? Or you say, oh, like you can look at any woman and know if she's wearing something on her face. Like 90% of women wear at least mascara. So that's usually like the first thing that I start talking to women about is what's in their mascara and what's on their lips. And it doesn't take a genius to be able to know like uh, and learn about fragrance. And if fragrance is in your mascara, like that's what's irritating your eyes, right? It can be a huge cause. So talking about just things that are not like, parabens like no one knows what that is like really i think i've been really successful at this because i i stay really simple everyone can look at the back of a package and read the word fragrance or perfume and then question what is in that so for me i i say you know keep it simple and then some people say oh well what if i don't wear makeup uh that's awesome um, if you can get away with not wearing makeup, most people should be wearing a little so you don't look angry and tired. It's just the way it is. Sorry, ladies and gents. Makeup enhances our natural beauty, and that's what it's meant to do. I've never been a makeup artist that wears a lot, a lot of makeup. And so I look different when I take the makeup off. I like to look like myself, just the better enhanced version. A little airbrush, but like you could see my skin pretty eyeshadow that enhances my eye shape, a little mascara or some lashes just to kind of elongate and open my eyes a little bit more. And then, you know, brow pencil just to kind of shape out my eyes. Like, you know, no one has perfect brows in our brows are cousins, not twins, right? So it's nice to kind of have a little something if you're blessed with brows or you're blessed with long lashes, that's awesome. Some people are blessed with amazing skin, so they don't really need, you know, they can use a tinted moisturizer, which is amazing at Beauty Counter. All of our lips get dry at some point. All of us should be wearing sunscreen. If you're not wearing sunscreen, bye-bye to you. It's just like, come on, this is general. That's like safety. Everyone should be wearing sunscreen worldwide. And everyone should be washing themselves. If you're not, that's a little scary just because you definitely should be like rinsing there's something for everybody let's just say even my really crunchy hippie friends have a lip balm and they've they all buy the amazing balm that we have will you be able to keep your other job if you want to but hey you can totally leave if you're not feeling it because this is a very buildable business. I'm I, Beauty Counter enabled me to start my podcast. So if that doesn't say something, 
I don't know what does, but I had the dream of podcasting and I used Beauty Counter to help fund that goal and support that dream and make that come to life. And they go hand in hand because Beauty Counter is about, you know, or um, the podcast is about clean beauty, which, you know, is, you know, that's kind of how I started in my journey initially. I didn't know a lot of other products. I just got introduced to Beauty Counter, found out about what was going on. I ordered some product, tried it for a little while, and then decided to be a consultant. I didn't just sign up when some lady told me about it. I wanted to see if this would even, because for me as a professional, I wanted to see if the if I could even use the makeup. And if it didn't work, where I was going to go to find good makeup that worked. And during that time, I had went to Credo. I tried a bunch of stuff. Oh my gosh. I was severely disappointed, you guys. I'm sorry. I love the idea of Credo and Think Dirty and all these places, but the products didn't even work. We did a photo shoot. I don't want to name the brand, but if you go and look, you can find it. But there were about nine huge like clean beauty brands from Credo that we used on an editorial and they did not like I had to reapply them so much. Oh my gosh, Kaiser Weege, like the uh, lip gloss. Oh my gosh, there's some that I was like, whoa, how is this like $50 and it doesn't work? Like I didn't understand it. And then I was like, holy crap, this is an amazing opportunity. I'm a makeup artist. I can also sell these products. Like I'm an educator. This is going to like fit so well into my business and I can make money doing it. Like the money aspect came later. I didn't sign up for the business. I was like, I'm not paying like $38 for foundation. Like I'm used to getting free product and use getting pro discounts. And like even the pro discount from makeup forever was like 25% or it wasn't a lot. It was 25 or 35. And I, when I got with beauty counter, I got like 45% off. I got like an entire new vanity of makeup for $600. It was insane. I signed up as a consultant because I wanted the discount. So if that makes sense, I didn't know that I was going to, I thought it was, I I knew also, yes, I could share this with my team. I could share this with people, but I don't know if people are going to like, or other people are going to even want to do that and stuff. Like I just was, I was doing it for me. You know, it was a little selfish. I'll admit it. That's the way it is. So the price point to kind of elaborate on that a little bit. So I did on Facebook, but I will say that like I just said, it was a little expensive, but compared to other clean beauty brands, it actually isn't there. And when you're talking about what what I was buying before, um, I'll name drop YSL and Chanel. I was, I was, I had like $80 bronzer palettes. I had like a $300 freaking like face cream and beauty counter doesn't they don't have price points like that. And they're actually good for your skin. My skin transformed on month one. It was crazy. It really started changing after a week and I had people asking me what I was using. And I was like, oh girl, like my friend Stephanie started buying it right away. She was like my first customer because she saw my face like from day one to day two. And she's like, what the heck? Like your skin looks great. You don't look inflamed. You don't look red. Like my eyes usually always water. Like all my friends like would always be like, oh, are you okay? Because my eyes were always watering. It was so freaking annoying because I could never even wear lashes because my, the glue was irritating my eyes. Like, oh my gosh, it was so annoying. It's an investment. Yes. But the products last forever and there's a 60 day return policy. There's a couple things I got that I was that I didn't even know about that I was disappointed with. So when I first got the mascara, I didn't know that there's a certain way to use mascara. You kind of need to warm it up a little bit. And I know that sounds like, well, I'm not buying mascara. I'm warming it up. Not like just with your hands or putting in your like boob, just to giving it a little of like in between, just to give it a little bit of like warmth. Um, because the cleaner mascaras, a lot of them, even, even other clean ones, um, the ones without like, you know, fragrance and formaldehyde and coal tar and all this stuff, they uh, um, are just made with like all kinds of crap. So you don't want to put that near your eye. Sorry. But um, the cleaner ones, a lot of them, you need to warm up a little bit. I, but I returned mine to beauty counter because I was like not happy with it because I thought it, I, there, because it doesn't feel like there's any 
product actually inside of it either. And so I was like, oh, I got an empty mascara. Like, the, you know, it didn't really work very well. And my friend reported the same thing. And I, like I said, I didn't know. So she returned it. Um, but I found out that like, there's a way to use cleaner mascara. So I can do that in another episode. But so yeah, I had 60 days to return stuff. I wasn't super impressed with a couple things. Um, and, and they actually reformulated and they came out with a highlighter and they came out with a better eyeshadow palette and they came out with a couple, um, with a liquid eyeliner. I didn't like the eyeliner before, but when the liquid came out, I was all over it. And so that solved a lot of my problems, but you know, like no brand is, is complete. Like even your favorite brand has products that you're not super excited about. And so I was really honest about that. And I still am. We didn't talk about testers. So you get amazing freaking testers, you guys. Like sample packets that are a great value and you pay like next to nothing for them. Because when people try even a little bit of this product, they fall in love every single time. Okay? That's how good they are. And you just have to trust me. I am I give free samples out like cake. Okay? I, or I don't know. What do, you, what do I give out? Like, like love. Okay. I get a, I give it to everyone I meet because when I have them, I run out all the time because I'm always giving them out because either someone loves a toner, someone loves a moisturizer, someone loves a night cream. And then I give these little counter mat, like counter um, match, like lotions for the face. People freaking love it. I don't know. My mom loves the hand cream. Like she's addicted. Um, she said it's the best hand cream she's ever used in her life. So there's different products people love, but I love giving the samples and they're beautiful. You don't have to, oh my God, there's so many companies that like, like even when you go in Sephora, they like give you a little jar and they write on it and it's like not cute. Like these are like the cutest freaking samples. So you will have a lot of things to hand out that aren't going to cost you a ton, like a dollar each, just so you can give to your friends to like try for a couple of days and stuff like that. And people will try something that looks better and feels better and looks a little bit more luxurious and they can actually experience the brand, see the logo, like the little bottles and they're super cute. A couple of people were asking about, oh, isn't it an MLM? And I'm like, no, you don't have to hold product. You don't have to sell a certain amount of product every month. You don't have to go out and recruit people and get a certain number of people. And I'm not going to give you all these sales goals that you have to get to or like all oh, this weird. No, 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 no. It's not like that. These products will, will speak for themselves. I can speak to the product. The value is there you'll get so far in this business, whether you want to sign up and just get a discount and get products for your friends and family and get discounted products for holiday. There's so many things you could do to, to like not even really sell to other people and still keep the major discount as a consultant. It's really funny. Like every birthday, every holiday, like everyone gets beauty counter from me. So it's just like a total no brainer. And I've been doing it for about a year. So a couple of people asked me, this podcast obviously might get a little dated, but um, I've been doing it for over a year and I absolutely love it. And I didn't actually get a consultant on my team for a few months because I wasn't focusing on that at all. I was focusing on sales and I was doing pretty well. And I got my hundred, like $150 check like right away. I started making my money back right away. So I had within six months, I had already like got made all my money back that I had spent on um, beauty counter, which was amazing. Okay. Another question is what do I try? And this is a great question, but it depends on what you wear normally and what you want to implement. If you need new sunscreen, give it a try. If you need a body oil, if you need a hair wash, if you want to switch out your lotion, it's up to you. But there is a couple great deals that you can get even before committing to anything. One is Flawless in Five, and this is makeup. So you get like six products for a great deal. Same as what a consultant gets. And then you can take a skincare quiz, or if you already know your skin type, you can go get the skincare regimen for you. So dry skin, oily skin, or uh, problematic, like acne prone skin. Or you can get um, another uh, makeup, like an eyeshadow and a ma and a liner and um, and stuff like that. So there's three different packages that you can get um, to start out and just try stuff. Someone asked about requirements. Um, financially, no, there are no monthly minimums. What I look for in a team member. So I look for a driven person that wants to be all in, that 
is motivated, self-motivated, who has a great attitude, and who doesn't rely on calling me every single time they have a question. They're going to use the resources that I gave them in the very beginning. I have a great system in place to give you all the information you need. Resources, groups, there's Facebook groups, there's a Voxer group. There's a bunch of things on our team that will keep you in the loop. There are email newsletters. We'll give you as much information as you need. But I don't think that you should be asking me because would you want someone asking you something that they already know where to get the answer from? Of course, you want them to be savvy. I want my girls to have to put in effort to value time because I'm doing this business also so I can have more time with my family with my with my business with traveling with podcasting right because this is i guess more of a hobby it's a, it is a business as well but i don't make the kind of money um at beauty counter that i do podcasting and then someone asked about levels like are there levels and how do i get to different levels i don't think that that's something that we would even talk about right now because we would need to see where you what you want to do with the business where you're at what you want to where you want to go if you want to get to the top girl or boy um i would say let's do it like i can help you get there and it's 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 as easy as you want it to be but there's a commitment and it's flexible and not optional. So you can do this business in the middle of the night. You could do it in the morning. You could do it in the middle of the day, or you could do it a little bit all day long. It doesn't matter, but you still have to put in the work. You still have to spend time to create an actual business. Do you need social media? No, <laughs> you don't at all. End of story. You can create one, but I wouldn't recommend it just because it's not going to give you results. You don't need a blog. You don't need a website. You don't even need a large network because like I said, you can go to the grocery store. You could babysit somewhere. You could, it doesn't matter. And there is no age range. You could start when you're 13. Well, don't count me on that. You might have to go into your mom or something. If you're, if you're that young and you're listening, I applaud you. I want to know who you are. Please reach out. And you could be 80, right? You could be really old and like, sorry, um, you could be very mature and, you know, you could talk to all your friends about it. It's never too late, right? I love my team. We're growing the team. We have amazing one. And like I said, we have an amazing resource guide within our team. So we are a great team to be with. This business is also great, you know, if, if you have a husband or kids right? Because once you're around other, you know, your husband's friends, that's how you can talk to their wives. And then your kids is, is so great to get it. Because mom, like, if you're a mom, you were already looking at what you were eating, what you couldn't and couldn't eat, right? So it's a natural in because anyone with a kid, even if they're 10 years old, knew that at some point they had to watch what they were putting in their bodies. And maybe they weren't aware of what they were putting on their bodies. And so that's a really interesting point for anyone who is looking to have a baby, who is having trouble having a baby, because there's a lot of uh, infertility linked to these products. So you could be an educator on that uh, forefront. And so I want to get into the different, different, different things that you could be, right, to give you a visual, okay? So optometrists, doctors, right? So doctors are great because they're already telling people how to be healthy and people trust them. For that reason, if you're a male or a female doctor and you are selling beauty counter or, or, or bringing that up in the health field, if you are, are a nurse or any, anyone who works in a hospital, really, like because people ask you, if they're already asking you things like that, even if you were a vet, right? Because People could be like, oh, I'm allergic to my cat. I, the Actually, the doctor told me I was allergic to Obagail, right? He told me that it was her fur and other things that I was allergic to and I needed a HEPA filter. So if you were talking to someone who worked in homes or if you did home cleansing or even if you're a fashion stylist because you're, you're, you'll you're get to know what they're wearing and things like that. If I mean, you can be in any profession and get in beauty counter because – Whatever you do as a profession, people look to you as that expert already. 
And it all links back to health and wellness, right? If you're in that space, you're going to be paying attention. If you're, if you're into health, you're going to be looking at what's on what you're putting on your body or you should be that should be an aspect if you're a nutritionist that's a gr- another great thing because they know the effects of what's going in your body and what you should be and what's absorbed and what's extru- excreted and all of those things and if you are in wellness you want to have you know or you're spiritual you again this is important it's all going back to your your mind body spirit it's like all connected um if you're in food again like if you are if you're a florist you know you could b- tie in fragrance you could tie in um you know natural scents versus all the fragrances out there that are harmful Um, there's so many different professions. Um, obviously if you're in makeup or skincare and esthetician, if you're not doing something like this, like if you're not with beauty counter and you're not taking advantage of the clean beauty movement, like welcome. (laughs) But I feel like anyone listening, even if you're in the industry already and you have your own line of products, you could still offer it. Like I offer products in bundles. I still do pop-ups. I include this in my lash binder business because it's a part of beauty. It's a part of what I stand for. So even at my podcast meetups, I bring product and give away clean products not just beauty counter ones, but in general, because I feel like if people care about beauty, they're obviously using something. Every kid should have this knowledge, especially once they understand what it is. If they're 10, 11, 12 going to school, you know, there was a a kid on the stink movie who almost died from Axe body spray. Like, this issue isn't just about adults or people that are trying to have kids or people that have already had cancer. This is about the future of the population. If it's creating genetic defects, birth defects, miscarriages, infertility, this affects the everybody. At a cellular level, if you are working in a you know water treatment facility, you should be talking about clean beauty. If you're working... It doesn't matter if you care about the environment at all. You should be working with Beauty Counter because it is a sustainable company. And if you're more into oils or you're more into another company, find certified B Corp companies and work with them. If they don't let you work with them, at least support them and buy their products. And don't buy from big corporations that are flooding our uh, our world with all this crap, right? I can go on and on for hours, but the world doesn't need another sales company. The world doesn't need another salesperson. The world doesn't need another MLM. The world needs voices to talk about important issues. And that's what I'm doing. And I hope that whatever you're feeling listening to this episode, you know, oh, I would never get with a beauty company. I'd never get with a skincare company. I would never get with like a marketing company or anything. If that's still your mentality after listening to this and you don't think you could help save your friends and family the heartache of going through things the hard way, then God bless you you know, because we should all be sharing this message. And if you, like I said, don't feel like taking on the hard questions or things like that, like direct them here, direct them to me at Beauty Counter, because I, this is what I am passionate about at least. And I think that all of us can talk about it very simply, like I said, because it's very easy to understand. And once someone wants to know a little bit more, there's there's a lot of resources now. There's the podcast, there's um, online, there's beautycounter.com, there's cassandramacler.com. There's a lot of places you can go and there's so many clean blogs. But where do you go that you can trust? At the end of the day, there's a lot of other companies out there right now that are claiming to be clean and sustainable. And I know it's confusing, but that's why I want you to know about Beauty Counter because it's, again, one of the fewer companies that has actually did everything right from the beginning and started with a solid foundation. 
not just a company that has been doing things one way for a hundred years and then all of a sudden is saying, oh, now we're sustainable, now we're organic, now we're eco-friendly and all that stuff. Greg, who had kids and was a mom, she wasn't in the beauty industry. She didn't start a company to create a lipstick line or a foundation line, by the way, that has a huge full range of colors. It does. It's not just like for white people or or like like light to light brown. It's the entire shade range with a huge immense amount of color, just so beautiful and that actually work that are amazing. And so if you do, you know, and a lot of clean brands don't even offer that. And so Greg, you know, she was a mom and she was finding out, she found out the hard way that um, what she was putting on her kids was like super harmful. And she was like, I want to change this. And Bono backed her for millions and millions and millions of dollars. And she got support from people that were going to listen. And she said, I want to empower other women and we need to spread this message as fast as possible. How can we do it? And it wasn't going to do very good sitting on a shelf. It's kind of like Lash Binder. It, you have to show someone and like really talk to them and go to events. And like for me, I love being out there and I love just conversation. I love human interaction. I love connecting. And so for me, like it's just, it naturally happens. It all goes back to the mission of getting safer products into the hands of absolutely everyone, women, children, doctors, teachers, lawyers, every everybody because right now there's no laws there's carcinogens endocrine disruptors every company is self-regulating themselves if they're not certified if they're not ewg verified if they're not eco cert certified if they're not a certified b corp you guys you can't i'm sorry you you really can't trust them like how can you trust them there's no laws there's no laws. And so they're not required to disclose anything. And these companies can give you cancer, guys, even if they're saying they're fighting for cancer. All right. Oh, it's just, just wake up and join the movement, the fight, and let's do something about this. If you enjoyed this podcast, if you learned one new thing, please go to leave a review. Okay. When you do that and you hashtag fan 1500, you screenshot that, you put it up on your Facebook and your Instagram or your Twitter. You are saying something you're sh- you're going to at least, at least one person is going to see it. Put it on your LinkedIn. If you put it on your Instagram before, put it somewhere new, but one person will see it and you're going to change their life. It really does make a difference because people are, that don't know you don't know what you don't know. So it's nobody's fault. And the companies aren't trying to give us cancer. I'm not saying anyone's trying to hurt you. I'm saying it's just been unregulated for so damn long that they're just putting all kinds of crap in there. Oh, here's some water. Oh, but if we put the water in there, we should probably put some other stuff so the water doesn't make it go bad. And by the time you're done, you get like 1% oil and 99% sludge. And like, it's, And then they charge $50 a bottle and you just assume that it's good. And then you wonder why you look tired and wrinkly and old. Oh, it's just crazy. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. I believe that we're on the cusp of something huge. And you could be that person to really get the right person hearing about it because we all do need to hear about it. So have a great week, month. Reach out if you have questions. If if I didn't answer your question about what beauty counter is all about um give me a shout and i can do a part two i'm gonna collect new questions and do you know updates but uh that's about it thank you guys so much this episode is proudly sponsored by lashbinder.com a patent pending tool that i developed to be the quickest easiest and safest way to apply lashes on yourself and clients. If you've ever tried applying lashes, you either use your fingers, which is pretty hard to master, a pair of tweezers, which can be super scary, or you were lucky enough to have a friend like me help you. Those days are long gone with Lash Binder, an applicator that'll have you looking fabulous in under a minute. 
Are you ready to say goodbye to expensive, damaging, and time-consuming lash extensions or hours spent in the mirror applying makeup? Don't you wish you could apply lashes easy and just go? Let your skin glow and your confidence skyrocket with the perfect pair of lashes applied with Lashbinder. Lashbinder is truly the lash tool you'll ever need. Be the first to get your hands on one today exclusively at lashbinder.com. Be sure to find us on Instagram at lashbinder, L A S H B I N D E R. Links in the show notes. Happy lashing! Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Clean Beauty Podcast. I'm so thankful for your support that I decided to start giving away $500 in custom curated clean beauty products each month. Do you want to win? Share why you love listening in a review on iTunes. Then screenshot that review and share it on your Instagram feed with the hashtag ban1500. If you've already reviewed the podcast and still want to win, just repost the giveaway from the Clean Beauty Podcast Instagram feed and you'll be re-entered to win in the next drawing. Good luck! For information on my tour schedule, upcoming events, press announcements, joining my Clean Beauty team, or to book me to speak at your next event, head over to my website, CassandraMcClure.com.